Morning all. Now this is um, a very old project that um, a friend and I designed and built, well, almost exactly 20 years ago. And it's a LED matrix message display unit. It's based around a Z80 microprocessor. There's the Z80, looks like a genuine Zilog one. Uh, clock and reset on the left, EEPROM, RAM, IO and address decode. And then on the display board, we've got sort of buffer chips, ULN 2803s at the bottom as column drivers and Darlington transistors as row drivers. Now we had seven rows initially on the prototype, which I've got here. We had eight rows, but it soon became apparent that, of course, you only use seven because the font characters are seven by five. That's kind of the smallest size character you can put on the display that's readable. It's not very bright. It's being backlit a bit here. And actually that was one of the problems with this. The LEDs that were available at the time cheaply weren't very bright. I think the high brightness ones were available 20 years ago, but um, they were just too expensive. Now we put this strange keyboard on it um, because it used very few data lines. So I'm going to see if I can remember how to use it. Uh, cancel. So H E L L O. Display. Yeah, so I can remember hello. I'm not sure I can remember much else because uh, I just haven't used this thing for years and years. But the reason I know that this is almost exactly 20 years old is because there on my wall in pride of place is a copy of Everyday Practical Electronics, May 1994, and there's the LED matrix message display. And I can tell you that uh, if you're an electronics hobbyist or enthusiast, one of the proudest moments is getting one of your designs into one of these magazines. And we... Uh, just sat waiting for this thing to be published so that we could rush into the shop and buy a copy of this magazine. That's me and my buddy Brett. So is there any point to this other than a lot of nostalgia and, uh, well, frankly, a little bit of blowing my own trumpet? Well, yes, there is, because I'm starting a new project um, where I want to make another one of these LED matrix displays, but this time I'm going to use these little matrix modules. And um, what I wanted to know was, on the um, one we designed 20 years ago, how did we orientate the bytes? And well, it's fairly obvious that we would have had vertical bytes. So say, for example, that first column on the H, we've got all of the LEDs coming on. It's strobing a bit, the multiplex is interfering with the camera. But, um, so that would have been, depending on uh, where the high bit and the low bit are, that would have been sort of seven bits on, one bit off. But it's a vertical byte. Now if you look at this display, I'm counting up in binary. I'm actually doing it 16-bit. Um, the first half of the display is a duplicate of the second. But these bytes are laid out horizontally. And that's a major problem because if you build font characters using bytes, you can't just print characters horizontally across this display because they've chosen to lay it out with bytes horizontal instead of, as you would normally do it, with bytes vertical. So I'm pretty right. I'm pretty sure I'm right in that this is just weird and it's going to be very difficult to put font characters on this display because of the way they've oriented it. These modules are based on the Maxim Max 7219 LED display driver chip. Now this chip's quite good because it does all the multiplexing itself and all you need to do is provide a SPI serial data uh, feed to it. But the way these modules have been designed is that they link across with these links and that's very convenient for building 
blocks of uh, displays, longer or larger displays, and you can cascade this pretty much indefinitely. But it's very inconvenient for laying out your font when they've got horizontal bytes. Now, if I wanted to rotate, well, I can rotate the whole lot like that. That's fine, but then I end up with a portrait display, and I don't want a portrait display, I want a landscape display, and landscape display is bound to be the most common choice. So could I rotate the individual modules? Well, no, because if I do that, then the link points are going to be top and bottom, and that doesn't help. So I can't really work out a way around this. Now, one possible solution, which I was considering, the reason I've got a 16-bit word on the display here is I wondered if it would be possible to widen bytes to become words and then widen those words to become well, I can't remember what they're called now longs I think they are 32 bits now I want eight of these um, all in a row I don't think I'm going to be able to work with 64 bit data and even then it's really impractical because if you want to put characters on the display in the smallest practical font size, you're back to the seven by fives and you really want vertical bytes. I can't see a way of getting away from this vertical byte thing. Now the Nokia 5110 display uses vertical bytes. Um, it's very easy to just pull data out of a font array and write it to the screen. It also has auto address increments so that makes it even easier. And then little OLED also has vertical bytes. So why doesn't the LED matrix? So I've seen this um, slightly different version of the Max 7219 dot matrix module. Um, this one's a good price actually, £1.39. And also you don't have the surface mount chip, so you don't have the um, hassle of soldering those tiny pins. This is from Toy Model 55. Uh, these modules here are two pounds each, so one pound thirty-nine seems like a, a, a better deal. Well, it is a better deal. Um, so I've got two of these in now. These would cascade side by side, so I think I would then have vertical bytes because the rows of display pins would end up alongside each other, and here the display pins are along the top and along the bottom. So I think that would work. You wouldn't get any sort of clever cascade linking, but I'd just solder those with wires. The advantage with this is that it also has um, mounting holes. So we've got three advantages really. Mounting holes, uh, a full-size dual inline chip, well, and that, uh, that better price. So I might build it with these, I think. So on the face of it, and I mean, I might have got this wrong. By all means, if I have got this wrong, please do tell me because it just seems to me like this is a bit of a lost opportunity. You've got these modules which cascade really easily and of course these cascade in two dimensions because the circuit board is no bigger than the block itself. But it's just impractical to cascade them in this orientation because of this byte orientation problem. So if you've uh, understood a single word of this video, and I hope you have, but um, I'd just like to know if I've got this completely wrong.